Splash from the check-ins. Thank you for tuning in. And right now, I have a very special guest on the line. This is probably going to be one of the deepest podcast episodes that we have. All right. So I have author, YouTuber. Uh, this man right here has a website selling great merchandise. I have with me, you guys know him. His name is Sharp Game, Guy on Girl TV, a.k.a. Sharp Game. What's going on? We back, man. <laughs> what another exclusive. Yes, we are back. Now, before we get into the topic, why don't you, uh, you know, promote your items, promote your products, promote your website? Just go to chooseyourrelationships.com and you'll find everything there. All right. So I sent you this yesterday. It was about adultery no longer a criminal offense in India. Okay. And you and I were talking back and forth on this and we threw out ideas, you know, back and forth at each other and it it turned into something much bigger than that. I was just kind of focused on the law changing in India, but you actually made a good point on how this can trickle over to other countries in Asia. So it starts off by saying India's top court has ruled adultery is no longer a crime striking down at 108, uh, 158-year-old colonial era law, which it said treated women as male property. Okay? Yeah. Not only has stuff like this happened, but it has also overturned a 157-year-old law, which effectively criminalized gay sex in India. So gay sex or LGBTQ, like same-sex marriage, that's uh that used to be a criminal offense over there. Now it's it's perfectly legal for gay marriages over in India, which I have nothing against that. But it seems like they're getting things in motion not only for the LGBTQ community, but they're also implementing laws to protect women. All right. What are your thoughts on this as far as the adultery no longer a criminal offense in India? Because women that are held down <clears throat> the longest, they tend to while out a little bit more. It's kind of like a the, the pastor's daughter, you know? So yeah. what, what's your opinions on this? Well, I think uh, everyone needs to understand, especially women, that it's not really about women. It's much bigger than that. See, these uh, large corporations... They they think about the the end goal, the the bottom line. That's what they think about. And they they're planning twenty, fifty years in advance. And you know, they'll do anything to generate money. And if they have to, you know, um pander and cater to women with laws and public policies, that's cool. If they have to give women more opportunities or, or, you know, these other groups, more opportunities, that's cool. But it's not really about women. See, what a lot of the, the mistake that a lot of women make is they get caught up in the, in the opportunities and the job creation and the cars, the house, the clothes, and then they break up their families and then they sit around looking all crazy. Like, what just happened? You, you destroyed your family because you thought that you could somehow – do it all on your own. And it, it just doesn't work like that. There's a yin and a yang. There, there's a reason why I'm, there's a balance of, of family, a balance of power. And every organization, every family, you know, but a, a lot of, it's, it's, really a, it's really a mind game out here, really. It's a game of psychology. But a lot of women don't understand that because you know they get caught up in the glitz and all the shiny objects and you know before at the end of her road she's like what 50 or 60 years old and she sitting in that rocking chair by herself trying to figure out what just happened <laughs> mm, yeah it's sad. it's sad it also goes on to say previous previously any man who had sex with a married woman uh, without the permission of her husband had committed a crime. But this goes both ways. So if the woman yep. had sex, if she but if she was in a marriage and she had sex outside of a marriage with another man, 
you know, some of these women, you know, that was breaking the law. And, you know, the in the olden days, like, some of these women were stoned to death. Uh, yeah. There were videos before of women being whipped in public, public yeah. humiliation. And this was recent. This wasn't, like, you know, decades yeah. ago. This was more recent, like, within the past, like, two, three years where women on the Internet were getting whipped. Uh, in public because they uh, committed adultery. So yep. now it's it's no longer a crime. Women can have sex with whoever they want outside of their marriage, and it, it's not looked at as uh, a crime anymore. And, and it's like you can't do anything to her. Now, you know, it, as far as them being treated like objects where men come home and let's say they get angry and put hands on her, that's a crime. Because, you know, yeah. at one point in time doing that, and then if a man did put hands on her in India for doing that, it was almost looked at as like, hey, that's nobody's business. You know, that's like they were looking at it like, hey, that's kind of what she gets. You know, that, that's how yeah. they that's how they looked at it. Now, as far as the yeah. article says right here, it says who challenged the law? And it said last August, a, a man named Joseph Shine. A 41-year-old Indian businessman living in Italy petitioned the Supreme Court to strike down the law. So here's a man who's not even living in India because by him pushing a law like that within India, you know, people could, people might attack him. People might harm him for exactly. being that outspoken and, and, and voicing his opinion like that and implementing, trying to push laws forward within a country a heavily religious country like that. He had to do it outside of India in a Western country like Italy where yeah. you know, women are very promiscuous over there. He's like, look, these women are freaks. I like it. I like having options. I want the same for my people in India and they sure passed it. Yeah. He, he's more, it happens like that. Most of the time There's always someone from the outside pushing laws and public policy. And we don't even, I don't even know who this guy is. He could be a, some investor or, you know, some guy that that owns stuff, property or, or resources in India. So he's probably playing the long game too. Mm. You, just, you just, you just don't, you just never know. Now, I mean, I, and looking at the pros and cons of this, I think it, it is a good idea to not, publicly humiliate and, and harm women just, you know, because they stepped out on their marriage and they're having sex with other men while they're married. I mean, from a moral standpoint, is that right? No, it's not right, but should a woman be, you know, publicly humiliated or whipped or stoned or beaten or killed for that? No, I don't, I don't, I don't think so, me personally. So I think that's a good thing for them. But at the same time, I'm noticing laws are changing really fast over there. You know? Yeah. Um, I also sent you uh, another article. This woman in Baghdad, Miss Miss Baghdad. So this was a woman yeah. who, who was, you know, uh, who won the beauty pageant representing Miss Baghdad. You know, I think she had yeah. over close to 3 million followers on Instagram. This woman was yeah. gunned down, I believe, today or yesterday for no reason. They said uh, the former Miss Baghdad and first runner-up for Miss Iraq was killed on Thursday after gunmen opened fire on her in the capital's Camp Sarah neighborhood, according to a statement by Iraq's Interior Ministry, which is investigating the incident. Now, we don't know what she's involved in. But exactly, you know, could this be a, a, an act of man? You know, the, the, you know, I, this is Iraq. This is Baghdad right here. You're posting up these CD pictures on your Instagram, CD sexual pictures on your Instagram, and your ta you got tattoos on your hands and fingers. Do you think that like she might have gotten gunned down because of that? It's possible, man. You know, she's um, she's a very uh, you know, the tattoos. That's like an act of rebellion in that society. 
you know, and the the, the uh, social media posts. She's uh, going against the grain uh, very much. And um, that guys over there in that region, they don't really play around like that. They don't they don't play the, the you know, the, the, they don't play games like they do versus being here in America, for example. Guys over there, they they tend to be much more aggressive and they can be very vicious. You know, that's what I've learned by just traveling and talking to people that's in that region. So it's possible, man. Right, right, right. Now, with the laws changing, all right, uh, I remember last year, uh, one of my homegirls, she told me that Thailand, because for those that don't know, I live in Thailand, she told me that Thailand is the experimental country. It's a country where they experiment things on. And when she said that, I automatically knew what she was saying because it, it, it makes sense. Seems like... You know, you see everything that they're trying to push over in the West going on out here in Thailand. And it's definitely broken up the, the family structure. I, you know, it's, it's, it's the wild, wild, not even wild, wild West, but the wild, wild East over here. Okay. Yeah. So they're implementing these laws really, really fast because it wasn't like it was about a week or two ago where they said, okay. Gay marriage in India is no longer illegal. Anybody can get married. Now, adultery is no longer a criminal offense in India. Do you think this could, they're, they're trying to implement these laws to change and mold India to be like the West? Of course. I, I, I called this years ago because once they, the federal government passed the, the laws here to make, um, Gay marriage is legal. I was like, oh, it's gonna, it's gonna cross over in these other countries: Japan, Korea, China, Thailand, and even South Asia. I, I already knew what time it was. Now, even though over here, you know, some states blocked it, but I, I, I knew that. I said, hey, just give it a couple of years. It'll, it'll definitely get passed in Japan, and because when I went to Japan. They had they had a gay parade, and that that didn't happen in the nineties. So I was like, oh, just like I said, it's gonna happen because people are gonna, you know, they're gonna protest and have more parades. We need more gay rights, and plus they had a press conference in Japan, and so you had the press conference. You know, it's gay people there speaking, talking, or whatever. But what was interesting, it was a, a, a white guy doing the talking. Mm. There was no Japanese person doing the talking at the press conference. So I'm like, oh, this, e this, this, this even proves more of what I was talking about. So I told a couple of friends of mine, the Japanese girls, I say, so we know who in charge. Just like I said years ago. They're, yeah, they're not in charge of anything over there. You got people that's from the outside. They're going in there. They're doing the talking. They're pushing these laws and public policies. So I wasn't surprised at all. Right, right. And I noticed that when I went to Hong Kong, uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Hong Kong, but over there, yeah. they have pictures all around of like uh, – What's the banks called? H H B S C or something like that. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of you know, yeah there's, yeah yeah. There's there's several families. That, there's several families that own the banks over there in Hong Kong, and they have pictures like big billboards of them standing on like you know grass with their family, and there's always a white guy standing behind them. It's like two families that have posters like that one is like hbsc and there's another one i forget the household name household something like yeah, that. household and yeah. they both had the same style like billboards over there where the family they're all standing you know aside from each other and the person who's standing behind the man in the family is a caucasian male both yep <laughs> both both pictures and he's not standing yep. on the side of them. He's standing behind them. So 
Yeah. Yeah. So like you said, like it's, we, I saw that back then too. Yeah, and um, Capital One basically built half of Hong Kong, basically, really, along with a couple other banks. So yeah, you know, and when you turn on the television and see all see a lot of these commercials, you you see the same thing. It's it's always it's going to be either a Japanese guy or a Caucasian woman. It's it's like never like never. Uh, a Chinese woman or a Japanese woman. It's like never. Now, any major uh, endorsement, uh, company, or product, could be sports, I don't care what it is. It's like never uh, a Japanese girl. Like, ne- I've never seen it. You know, I, I'm like, why is that? And then I asked some people, I said, I said, I said, hey, you don't think anything wrong with that? You know, you don't think the Japanese women should be displayed along with the Japanese guy in the commercial? And he's like, well, you know, yeah, I see your point, but you know, yes, that's that's the end of that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you when you come out here in Asia, when you hear that, well, <laughs> you already know what time it is when you hear that. Well, it's a very yeah. high pitch well. It's like. Eh. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they don't know what they don't know know what to say. They just won't say anything. Now, from what I see, it's like I don't like what what I see right here, and we've seen this in America. All right. Um, a lot of women who are outspoken the most of feminism are really women who are not accepted in society as like, uh, uh, you know, we, we used to have that old saying because, you know, America used to have a uh, rules and a, and a code in America at one point in time, you can't turn a hoe into a housewife, you know, a lot of hoes <laughs> and, 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 you know, you had a lot of simps out there. They were wifing hoes anyways, but it was like a lot of these hoes out there were mad that, you know, nobody that they wanted wanted to take them serious, that nobody wanted to wife them. Like, hey, you're not wifey material. It's like it, you, you can't just choose when you want to be a wife after being a hoe. And you can't get mad. That's just how the game works. So you got a lot of women now that are outspoken about that, you know, the slut walk and everything. And it's turned into something else. But now hoeing is, like, acceptable. So it's like now, you know, <laughs> it, it's... It's almost like the norm now to turn hoes into housewives, you know? And it seemed like some of these women that they felt like they've been held back the, the hardest, you know, they've been held down and, and, and controlled the hardest have been the ones that have been more promiscuous and outspoken about uh, being accepted as, you know, a, a hoe or whatever, or to be a housewife from a hoe. Now, I mean, in India, the laws have changed now, okay? One of the laws that they implemented, that they had in place before was uh, it did not allow women to file a complaint against an adulterous husband. So if the husband stepped out and was fucking a bunch of women, it was against the law for women to file a complaint or to get a divorce from her husband that was fucking around like that. Now that this law is in place, I mean, I, I think that when women have been held back for so long and, and at you know to that extreme, usually stuff like that that happens, they tend to wild out the most. <laughs> you know, do do you think that could happen? Because I I've seen that in Thailand for the longest. Yeah, I it, I think it really depends. Depends on how much. Um, it really depends on the guys as a collective in that society. So regardless of the laws, you know, all laws have to be backed by force. And some guys have the mentality like, hey, "Look, I don't care what the laws say. You know, we this is what we're doing." So, so a lot a lot of it has to do with the guys. You know, I mean, I don't really, I've never been to India before. I, I know a lot of Indian guys and women, 
But I so I have a good idea of their mentality, how they think. They kind of don't really care about no laws, you know, because like I like I said in a previous video a couple, couple of days ago, there's no such thing as a fair fight. I mean, people are not playing fair out here. Uh, most people are not like that. So, you know, I, I I just think it really depends on the guys. I think if uh, if it's a guy that don't have no fight in him, he, he just lay down and go along to get along. Yeah, these laws will the laws will affect those guys, the beta guys. They'll affect those guys. They're just gonna go along with it, and regardless of how much they get taken advantage of and get taken to court and get child support and alimony and all that good stuff, you know, so it'll affect those guys most definitely. But there's always going to be some guys that's just going to rebel and say, Hey, and they're going to make threats and they're going to do what they got to do not to get sucked up into that uh, debacle. <laughs> that's what yeah. I think. Yeah. Because from what I see, and this is a good point that you mentioned was that when I see laws changing that fast and when they see, okay, because I, I'm not sure. I believe India is like, is that that's a Muslim country, right? It's kind of like Saudi Arabia almost. It's like Hebrew. You know, it's Hebrew. Hebrew. Most Hebrew. Most of them. And then I read somewhere that a lot of people over there were Christian. Uh, anyway, like they're, they're, you know, it, it, it's they're very religious over there. They have rules. Oh yeah. They have a very strong code over there in India that you don't see <laughs> in a lot of places. Yeah, they worship a statue. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I don't want to talk against anybody's religion if whatever they do, if that's what they do, the more power to them. But the thing is, they right down. <laughs> They're right down the street from me. It works up a statue. Oh. <laughs> oh. I forgot. I forgot what they call it. But but the thing but the thing is, it's like when I see this going on, I think you know because this is what I saw in Thailand. You know, Thailand. You know, they they had it, it was a there, there was a strong code over here, homogenous society. Um, you know, they were very heavily into their culture. Okay. You see, you, yeah. you see culture out here, like in Korea, you might not see it that much. Like whatever they have left of their culture, they use it as, uh, for, for tourism. That's all out here. They don't yep. use their, they don't use their shrines or their temples as tourists or for tourism. No. They use that because no, they're serious about it. You dig? And yeah. the thing is, is what they do is they open the floodgates up for the West to invest into property and restaurants and malls out here. So when you um, when you import items over here, then they tax it so that they can make a profit. And then a lot of shit over here is more expensive than what it is out West. All right, and then you don't uh, give them a pay increase in salary, so a lot of times that leaves women to have to be like, "Well, fuck, you know, these foreigners are coming over here, so I could just get into the sex industry over here and make a killing doing this." Besides struggling, when you know I see Louis Vuitton and Gucci and uh, Victoria's Secret all these name brands coming over here and people, when they want a piece of the pie that destroys the family, you know, opening the floodgates. Yeah. You know, sure. You, you, you can get a computer, you can get an iPhone, but at the same time, like it's really, uh, kind of messed up the family structure out here. Now I think that could happen over there in India as well, by the way, some of these laws are going. Like I said, I think it's a good thing to protect women, but at the rate that they're pushing out these laws, I can see it turning into a Thailand. Yeah, it's already happening. It's not it's moving. At, it's not moving at the rate of Thailand, you know. But um, I've I've been hearing a lot of people saying, "Hey, I'm," uh, they say they're going back and forth to India. 
past five years or whatever, you know, but they're not staying over there very long because they don't have the uh, infrastructure like, um, like, like compared to being in Thailand or out West or whatever, even though they do have some city spots, some city areas or whatever, but the, uh, the, the areas where the techie guys hang out at, it's not really at the, in the condition that they would like, you know, so, you know, so it's happening, but it's just, um, it's a slow process. Right, right. Another thing you said that uh, by how fast and rapid the things are changing over there, it can have an effect throughout Asia where yeah. um, when they see that, okay, this works over here, then we could try to do the same thing over here in this country, in this country, in this country. And I find it very interesting that you said that the announcements that were they were making over in Japan – uh, you know about uh, you know the gay pride parade or whatever, and some of the laws yeah. that they were changing over there. That it was a white spokesperson that was saying yeah. that. Yeah, I find that very interesting. Me too. At the time, I, I I I was you know because somebody sent me actually the article was on uh, Japan Today dot com. And um, somebody sent me, sent it over to me. This is like last year. And uh, I'm like looking this for a video or something like that. But they just uh, wrote an article and posted a picture of this, the speakers. So I'm looking for the Japanese person, a Japanese woman or a guy or something like that. No, it was just a Caucasian guy. It sounded like he was from somewhere over here you know so I'm like well what so I'm like well I guess we know who's in charge you know if he, he's doing the talking he's representing for somebody for some corporation or some organization you know right right and you know I, I've been hearing about uh, you know they've been trying to you know to get this population control down packed, you know, for the longest, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, I believe that, you know, feminism can be used as a weapon. You know, I, I think feminism is for women that are going through some of those things like they're going through as far as uh, getting abused or not being able to report or, or file a, a police report on their husbands for stepping out on them. You know, I, I think that's feminism. It, that's feminism is for women like them. You understand? Feminism is for women who've been raped and then they said something and nobody cared about it. Feminism is for women who have been, you know, physically abused. And, and I, I'm all for feminism for women like that. So I think women in countries like. You know, in India, they have a legitimate gripe, but I'm, I'm wondering how far will they take it, especially when you have uh, events going on in Japan. And it's like a person of the country isn't even speaking up for people of the country. You, you dig what I'm saying? Yeah. So how far will they take feminism in India? I mean, they might have a slut walk pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I think they'll take it as far as they can really because you know you have a lot of unfortunately you have a lot of broken women that have had that went through some tragic experience and they're being exploited for you know profit and you know they'll use these women to the fullest right right so yeah that's a good point you brought up now, another thing you said uh, yesterday was uh, it could get to the point where they're going to start taking opportunities from the guys and giving it to the women. Oh, yeah. That's, explain explain that's, that. Yeah, that's like, uh, that's been going on, my goodness, for, oof, for hundreds of years. Makes it just like this. It's a simple concept, really. 
if you want to destroy the family, if you want to create strife between the males and the females in any society, basically all you got to do is switch switch places with between the sexes. You want to take resources, take opportunities from the males, and shift it to the women. And and what that's going to do? That's going to create a, a cycle of chaos. Basically, because what's going to happen is a lot of these guys and that society are not going to, they're just not going to make it. It just because they don't, don't have the mental capacity to make it, they don't have the skills, they don't have the drive, they don't have the determination. So I'm going to say a good 40, 50% of these guys are just not going to make it. They, they, it's going to, the struggle is going to just be, it's going to be just too much. And then you're going to have the women, they're going to have more opportunity. And she's going to be looking at him funny style now because he's going to be like, well, what happened? You used to do this and you used to do that. You don't do that no more. The kids need this. The kids need that. And they're going to be bickering back and forth. And then, um, then you, then you got to put the media going to come in with the, the magazines, the television, the marketing, the promotions, and then they come out with the books, and they come out with the shows, and they come out with the movies, and it's going to pander towards women uh, feeling empowered, like they like they're special, and that's going to make them treat the guys even worse now, and and then it's going to be going to get to a point where it's not going to be about family anymore. It's going to be about living a lifestyle, living a certain type of lifestyle now. And then it's going to move on from there. It's not going to be about love anymore or how you feel about the person. It's going to be it's about a transaction. And it's going to be on, and it'll morph from go on and on. And then it's going to, from there, it might go to what it is now. It's about, it's a, hey, it's, it's not about the gender, you know, it's, it's about love. So I, I know I'm a woman and you're a woman. I'm a man and you're a man. We can both love each other. It's about the love, right? We can be together, right? And so that's what it is now. So 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 then they come out. Then people start saying, "Hey, man, it's no, it's, it ain't it, being. Forget your gender. It doesn't matter. We can still be together." And that's when the, the new laws come in. So you guys can get married now. Same sex marriages. And it goes on and on from there, and it creates a, 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 a group of confused, backwards-thinking people in society, man. I know in, um, in uh, like, I, I've talked to a lot of women out here, and some of the women that were single, they were young women, attractive. And I asked them like, "Damn, how come like you guys are single? Like, what, what's 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 the matter?" And what they told me they was don't. like, they were like, you know, some women they told me like, you know, I own a business, and you know, that's totally looked down upon for women to own a business out here. So I, I think as far as you know, it, it's 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 definitely it's not my culture. That's their culture. You understand? Yeah. Like culture is all about the inner thoughts. Of people, that's what a lot of people don't understand. It's like, you know, you got people like I, I did video reviews of. Uh, you saw me do it of uh, Sky Seti, right? And yeah, his whole channel is talking about Korean culture, but he hasn't said one thing about Korean culture. You know, you when you scratch the surface, you're just talking about the food, K-pop, and that's it. Just being over here living your best life but that's that's part that, that's that's only a small fraction of what culture is culture is about the inner core of people's thoughts thought patterns how people collectively think out here and uh, at times i mean it's been that way for so long you really can't change anything now as far as these laws being put out i do think women should not be harmed for uh, owning a business or not, they shouldn't be looked down upon for owning a business. I don't think 
you know, women or men should be criminalized for having sex outside of their marriage. I do think if a woman wants to get a divorce from a husband because he's banging a bunch of chicks on the side, I think she should have that right. And I think, you know, if, if people that are gay or homosexual want to get married, then I think they have that right as well. The thing is, is I'm just looking at it from a standpoint of, you, all right, this is coming so fast. Is there a hidden agenda behind it? Because they give, like you said, as far as giving opportunities to the women and taking it from the men, they do that out here in Thailand a lot. It, I, to me personally, I don't think it's a patriarchal society over here. It's a matriarchal society in Thailand. That's why when that woman told me, like, nah, Thailand, is, it's the experimental country, it made a lot of sense. Yeah, at, yeah. at one point in time, I'm pretty sure it was patriarchal over here. Now, it, it doesn't seem that way. You know, you still have... Countries like Korea, it's a patriarchal society. I think, to be honest, I feel like that's the only country left that's really like hardcore. The system is like patriarchal over there in Korea. That's like the only country I see now. I don't really see that in Japan too much. I mean, I could be wrong. Like, do you think it's patriarchal or matriarchal in Japan? Hey. Uh, I think it's kind of in the in the middle. Kind of, I think kind of both. Mm. I think kind of both at times. It just it really depends. I think they kind of go back and forth. Really depends on uh who's involved and what's involved. Yeah, but you know, at the core, uh, at at the end of the day, the males they still. It's still a male driven dominated society. Okay. Okay. But they, they do kind of bend from time to time. Right. And, and that's they do what kind, I like see. The, Go ahead. Like, I gave you an example like the Naomi, the tennis match. That was a good example of it. Because if she wasn't in sports, they would have never said anything about her, didn't even know her, never mentioned her. Would have never claim her, you know, because she's she because she's in the sports. They say, okay, we'll go along with this just for this time, and after that, uh, we keep it moving, you know. Right, right, right. And I I feel the same way about China. Like China, it's a male driven society, but there's forty million more men than women. So in relationships over there, like on the surface, when you see, when you look at the corporate world and, in, 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 you know, the, 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 the business aspect, you know, the business culture over there, you see, okay, it's male driven. But when you see the relationship, when you see marriages and, and relationships over there, you'll see that it's female driven. So it's kind of a seesaw, you know, like when I was over there, um, women had a, a a huge list of demands coming from Chinese men. Like, look, you got to have a car. You got to have money. Yeah. You got to have the newest iPhone. You got to have this, this, that, and the third if you don't have it. And if you can't take me shopping whenever I want to, you can't pick me up from a doctor's appointment or from work whenever I need you to, then I don't want you. That's the list wow. of demands they had for their males over there. So wow. even though they were they were running things at the uh you know at at, at the office uh -huh. at home it's a totally different story. You know, a wow. lot of people That's... are very money hungry over there and they have so much they have forty million more options than they do. <laughs> wow, that's uh that's interesting. You know, I've never, I've never heard a woman talk like that in Japan. Mm. Like never. Like when I say never, like never. I've never had a woman yeah. talk like that. Now they might talk like that here in America, yeah. yeah. But in Japan, I've never heard a, a Japanese girl talk like that. 
No, they're not. Yeah. They're not out. They're not outspoken. They're not outspoken like that in China. You know, they don't get on social media and, and say that. You understand? But the thing is, is when you have a one-on-one conversation with them, they, I mean, yeah. several women have told me that. And it's kind of weird because you have men over there that still abide by some of those same rules. Like, because they have very high standards. They still have high standards, even though there's 40 million more of them than women. So you still got dudes that are like, eh, nah, you 26 years old. Eh, nah, I don't, I don't want you. You're too old. Nah, don't want you. You're no good. You're no good. You're no good. They're still kind of picky yeah. over there, even though they don't really have any options. So that's why a lot of males are really trying to get out of China. You see a lot of people from China come over here, you know, or going to Africa yeah. or going to other countries. Yeah, and... yeah that is true. See, in Japan, the Japanese guys, Japanese people, for the most part, they're not trying to leave Japan. And they'll leave if they got a job or something like that, or go to college, scholarship. But they're not really, they're not excited about coming over here. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I think it's a different. It's different mentality between Chinese and Japanese. Very different. Seems now they do have. Um, they might if a if a Japanese guy wants to get with a Japanese girl, it's usually like he usually let her know in an indirect way, you know, and either she's gonna be down with it or not, but it won't be. Uh, like demands or anything like that. He'll just find a way to provide. Now, it might not be the way she would like. In most cases, it's not, you know, because, you know, it's just not really like that. Um, I think China is much more, um, I think China probably got more resources and have more options in Japan. It sounds like, but just by how you talk about China, I think, you know, China seems to be well. China is bigger. That's one. That's one thing. It's much bigger than Japan. So yeah, I think that makes a difference. Right, right. But over there, but you got a lot of guys that, you know, they come from China to come over to Thailand so they can get a woman over here, have kids with her, get married, and then they get. Uh, they get their visa and they open up shop over here, you know, yeah. because it's like, okay. And usually some of these guys, they, they wife up, um, the leftovers. <laughs> they, they really wipe up the leftovers. Like, you know, like what brothers do, they, they get the women that are classified as no good. Like I, this, <laughs> this one, this one chick I was dating out here. I mean, she, she had her own house. She lived over. Yeah. She lives over by Assumption University. For those that don't know, that's way on the east side. That's out of Bangkok, way on the east side. Like you, you, there's no bus or train that goes over there. You gotta drive over there. You gotta take a cab to get over there. And uh, she, she had her own house, real nice house, spacious, nice car. You know, she used to pick me up and drive me everywhere. And, uh, you know, she was telling me about her life. She was like, yeah, you know, my mother is, a, you know, is a single mother. My father ran out on me, which the, the father was Thai. So, you know, <laughs> I'm telling y'all that that single parent home is, is rampant out here. And she told me like, yeah, you know, when I was a baby, my father ran out on me and my mother and my mother had no money, nowhere to go. She was poor, begging on the side of the street for change. And then her stepdad came into play. He had bread. He came from China, married her mother. She, you know, never had kids. The dude never had <laughs> kids with her mother. Or she didn't allow him to, you know, have kids, impregnate her. And uh, yeah. the dude ended up, you know, buying her a crib, getting her a car, the daughter, the stepdaughter. And, you know, I, I was all up in the crib that he was paying for. I was all up in the car that he was paying for. You dig? <laughs> so they do the same thing. Like, but, yeah. but 
my thing is is as far as taking opportunities and giving it to the women and not giving it to the men I see, I see that out here in terms of like just women having options when they open up the floodgates for tourism you dig and you don't really see men and women together like that and if the the men are with women you know in public you know you hear some of these women talk about how clingy their dude is you know that you hear that all the time in thailand the men are clingy the men are clingy the men are clingy it's because it's it's a lack of trust that's out here it's like i don't know where my girl is at she could be out sucking dick for 700 baht right now for all i know that's why yeah. the men are extremely clingy because he can lose his woman to the game at any second. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. You know, but I mean, hey, she might go out and do something strange for a piece of change and come back home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I'll be like, hey, buddy, I don't want her. I don't want your woman permanently. I just want her for you know, I were two. That's all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and that, that's what people are afraid of over here. So, I, as far as some of these laws, let's get into the pros and cons. Okay, what are some of the pros behind laws like this? Because, like you said, man, they're implementing some of these laws in India. They're not bad. I mean, they could, you know, turn into something else. You know, but it's gonna tr have a trickle effect in other countries oh, yeah. out here. So, what are the pro? What are the pros behind laws like this being implemented all over Asia? Well, it, it's it's good for business investors. You know, they can go in the, places like India, maybe a company like Google. You know, they or some other. Investors might go in there and, you know, they'll open up shop, you know, and um, build around that business. And, um, you know, they'll, so it's good. I think it's good for business if you're a foreigner. Now, it it is almost never good for the locals. Almost never. I've, I don't see... I, I've heard horror stories, you know, because people get the land taken, get the house taken, or they get bought out, or, they, or if you don't sell, they'll find a way to get you up out of there, or find a way to get you off the land. Um, so so you know, some people will have jobs, they'll work for the company, and uh, so I, I, it's a give and take, but at the end. The big businesses always win, you know, because they get they take your land, they, you know, they'll they suck the money out of your economy, don't pay no taxes, and hey man, so that's that's. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait! I'm I'm talking about the pros. You already given the horror stories. I, I just want to focus on the pros. Do you, okay, oh, yeah. number one, you said it's it's good for business, right? Yeah, that's the pros. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, a pro that I have is uh, it does protect women because, like I said, man, you know, I don't think no woman should be – I don't think a woman should be shitted on for owning a business out here. You no. Know, I, yeah. I don't think – a woman owns a yoga studio and all the men are like, man, fuck her. You know, you're not like – you should build with her. You should be happy. Like I think that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, but they don't. Well, they they in the old way of thinking. You know, that's that's how they were raised. So I I understand. So you know, I don't right. necessarily agree with it, but I understand. You know, the I mean so these laws. Good. These laws are. I think they're going to change the thought patterns later on because some of this stuff that they're putting out there. Is gonna change the culture of Asia forever. Yeah, that you know, I, the next generation. That's where you're gonna really see it. Right. You right. know. Yeah. 
You because know, so. this, this is because when the when the new generation comes up and they see these new laws and how everything is normal, they start to, you know, uh, they they start to you know kind of point the finger at the older folks like, you know, what the hell is wrong with you? Things are changing. You're still stuck in your old ways. Like, oh, she's just still stuck in her old ways. And the youth yeah. always wins at the end of the day when you have control over the youth. You have control over the future. Yeah, and 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 any society that's how it usually goes because it's usually a rift between the the young and the and the older people, and a lot of times the older people see the big picture, and you know the younger people see today and what's going on right now, and they can't see. 10, 20 years from now because they're just too young. So that's where the riff usually occur at, you know? And by the time 10 or 20 years comes around, you're not even going to be thinking about what your mother and father used to say. It's kind of like, well, I mean, this is the normal now. This is the norm now. Well, well by that 20 years go by, your parents is dead. So you be thinking that, hey, man, you know, they did have some good points. Maybe, maybe I should have listened to what they were saying. And then you'd be saying that, man, that this is what they were talking about. So, yeah, true. you know, I can, I can relate to that. True. I can relate to that. You know? Because they're, 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 but they're going to be under a new program. They were like, damn, the old program, you know, my mom and dad was talking about it. It made sense. Now... I'm under a new program and I can't seem to shake it. <laughs> yeah. So, and 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 the thing about that, and when it's time for you to have you to have kids, or or maybe you're thinking about having kids, uh, and then you like, okay, I gotta, I gotta like, you know, I gotta find a way to reinvent myself to get out of this, because <laughs> I don't want the next generation to get caught up as I did. It'll, so it'll you, too you know, late. it's too late. Yeah, I mean, hope, well, some people make it happen, some people don't. But it's it's tough because you got people around you. They're thinking, their thinking is going to be different from yours. So this is where a lot of the peer pressure comes in. At people around you, they're telling you one thing. They're looking at you funny style. You be like, yo, I'm going over here. I'm doing this. They be like, what? Man, that don't work, man. That's too hard. <laughs> you know, so that's why a lot of people don't get anything done because they don't have no support. There's, there's people are bashing them. They don't, no good word. They don't have no, you know, it's like, so some people be like, oh, I just give up and I just keep doing what everybody else is doing so I can fit in. <laughs> right, right, right. I think another pro, another pro is, I guess, for, uh, a lot of you betas, I mean males out there, uh, that are thinking about coming to Asia. You know, from what I see, is like you know if things are changing like that. I mean, I, I mean, I don't think they're changing that rapidly to where it's going to happen within the next five years. I don't even think it's going to happen in the next ten years. But I think things are changing at a point where a lot of these women will. Uh, date whoever they want without worrying about who, you know, what their parents might have to say or what uh, the random neighbor is going to say or what somebody on the train is going to say to them or somebody at a restaurant is going to say to them. That's kind of the main thing that a lot of brothers are having issues out here. You know, you're meeting women, you're trying to connect with them, and... They like, yeah, I mean, you, you know, I like you, you, you know, but I, I can't be seen with you in public. You're like, I, it would, you know, I have more to yeah. lose in the game being seen with you like that. So this ain't really going to work. They don't tell you that, but that's kind of what they're oh, going yeah. through mentally. So this will, yeah. these new laws will probably alleviate that. Uh, I, it depends on the dad and the family. Nah, it don't matter no more. With these new laws, it, it don't matter no more. 
No, some like I said before, some people don't care about no laws. They don't care. And some people don't care. Now, now there's some people that are going to go along with it, of course. But it, it's some people in the family going to be like, the hell with them laws. <laughs> this is my family. This is how I do things here. If you don't like it, I take you out of the will. But hey, but like you said, like you said, they're going to start giving. They're going to start taking opportunities from the men and giving it to the women. So at that point in time, if it, if it does get to that level in Asia, it won't even oh, it matter. Will. It won't even matter because look in Canada. Yeah. Not one, not one woman over there gives a damn about what their father has to say because the system really looks out for the women over there. It's running rampant over there. Yeah. The hustle yeah. over there is if a woman gets full custody of her kids, she's taken care of for a long time. And who do they look for to have kids by? All the crackheads, the drug addicts, the, the jail baits. Yeah. The, the jail yeah. birds, that's who they have kids by. Then once they have kids, they get full custody. They get a nice apartment. They get uh, uh, assistance from the government, food, everything. Dental. Yeah, that's wealth. The welfare system, basically. Yeah. 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 But they don't have that in these other countries. No, they don't. And, had it you know maybe they'll get to that point but they're not there yet maybe i mean no they, they to a certain degree i want to say a welfare system is they they're at that point in asia in japan but the child support system is in japan yeah yeah but it's like i never met any guy that was paying child support i, I never met him you know I don't know. Like I'm, I've been there four years. I ain't. I never met a Japanese guy. Hey, I'm paying child support. Like, damn, I never met one really. I think a lot of women are afraid. To even put a guy on child support over there. <laughs> there's some guys. There's some guys on child support over there. The thing is, everybody's oh, just not going to tell you to tell a foreigner. Everybody's not going to tell a foreigner their business. And I learned that last year. Oh. No, I'm not saying they're not on child support. I'm just saying it's it's not common as it is being here in America. That's right. all I'm saying. Right. And yeah. even though, and even though you know you you have a lot of guys, they have the the option to put the guy on child support. Some of those women are so scary. I don't even think they would. They'd be like, I don't even think most of them would even think about it. They fear what the guy might do to them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jap the average Japanese woman tends to be very shy and scary. So they're yeah. like, oh no, I don't know what he might do to me. What's gonna happen to me if I do that? You know, they're afraid to get a divorce. Right. They're afraid to put him for a divorce. So they're like, they're afraid, you know. So, uh, so sometimes, I mean, if the option is there to do something, most people, most women. They'll they'll think twice and they'll analyze what's the consequences if I do this, what's gonna happen if I do this before they do it. Now you got some women, but they just don't care. They're crazy like that. They, they don't care what you do with them. You might threaten them all day, but until you back up what they say, they'll be like, they'll just try to call your bluff. Some women are like that too, but that ain't the average woman. Right, right. But I mean, with these new laws happening, I can see in the future that women are really aren't going to be afraid to do it. Because when you had a legal, see, <clears throat> just because these laws are changing in India doesn't mean things are just going to change automatically. Like you said, some of these women are still going to be afraid, <clears throat> regardless if the law protects the woman, you know, a, a an offense, a, a criminal, a crime could happen. You know, yeah. a physical assault and battery could happen to a woman still if the law says, hey, you can file for divorce if your husband is stepping out on you or sleeping with other women. So it's not going to change overnight, but in the direction that they are taking, which is a more westernized way of thinking, you know, the laws are more westernized now. Yeah, 
that I mean that eventually is going to turn into women are going to be more outspoken. There's probably going to be feminist think tanks in these countries. Uh, yeah, women are probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they already have women that that uh, I saw one. Uh, I saw an Indian woman uh, about six months ago. She was talking. She's one of those feminist women that's talking about. I, we want. We need more rights over here. <laughs> well, they're already over there. But uh, but you know the funny thing is you brought up a a, a a a um a point a couple minutes ago that a lot of these women that are so called feminists they're not guys don't really want to be with them and they don't want anything to do with a guy anyway in most of the most cases so. I, I think if 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 these women were so in demand for men, I don't even think they'd be talking like that. I think they they they're coming from a place of uh, rejection, yeah. frustration. Right. Yeah. I mean, they 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 recruit they recruit some of these women. They they get to recruiting. You yeah, know, when you look at Amber Rose and that slut walk. Oh I God, mean, she got these little young girls on smash. You know what I'm saying? They, they getting the new yeah. generation. They even getting the women that's around her age, and the media is promoting this heavy. Oh yeah, uh, so. yeah. They use her up and uh, all those women up, and tell. Until basically, you know, and 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 you know what, you know what's sad today. Some women that's on on the internet, on social media, mainly Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. They, yo, these are some awful women. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just have to put that out there. I mean, like, I'm like. Uh, some of the stuff they'd be saying, I'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you, they make it seem like they're talking for the average woman out here today. I said, lady, what are you talking about? The average woman is not on social media. <laughs> they don't stay, they don't tune into Amber Rose. You know, they don't follow Amber Rose. They don't follow uh, Kim Kardashian. They don't. Oh, you saying that the average the average woman don't follow Amber Rose or Kim Kardashian? No, the average uh, the average decent, moral, practical thinking woman ain't got time to be following Kim Kardashian and Amber Rose. They they taking care of their family. They living their lives. I they got to time. I beg to differ, and I'll tell you why. Because why. Name how many women you know that have morals, ethics, and values. Like it ain't the majority of women out today. I mean, I'm speaking from the Western world, as far as like America, Canada. The morals, ethics, and values that's exited the door a long time ago. You got Kim Kardashian. She got over a hundred million followers on Instagram, and these are all like the the the. The, the culture of beauty has changed because of Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian is promoted heavy out here. All these little girls and, and older women and, and women at age range from like 40, 45 down to preteen want to be a Kim Kardashian. They want to look like a Kim Kardashian. Their products, their little lipsticks and their eyeliners or whatever... They're not being sold out for no reason. These women are trying to look like them. And, and even if their products is some bullshit, it could be from Crayola. It could be some crayons in that fucking, <laughs> in that fucking lipstick uh, makeup box. These women are flocking to them and what they have to say all the time. And even if they don't follow them, they're repeating, repeating and regurgitating the same, their same talking points. Even if they don't follow them on social media, even if they don't have social media, the landscape has changed now. So they don't have to follow uh, an Amber Rose or or a Kim Kardashian to have the same talking points. 
But these women have not like hundreds of millions of followers for a reason. <laughs> so I, I would, I would, I, I disagree with that one. <clears throat> Because women, women of morals, ethics, and value, hoeing wouldn't be the norm now if these women out here had, if the average, we're talking about the average woman has morals, <laughs> ethics, and values. Because if they're not following, if they're not following a Kim Kardashian or Amber Rose, they're following some raggedy bitch from Love and Hip Hop. They're following some raggedy bitch from uh, husbands or uh, housewives or basketball wives. Or insecure scandal, they're following some raggedy bitch somewhere else. So when I say Kim Kardashian and Amber Rose, I'm not just talking about them. I'm talking about women like them with the following too that a lot of these women are following and repeating the same talking points because hoeing is the norm now. Hoeing was always going on. It's always going on, but it wasn't the norm. It wasn't the norm. Hoes. You know, back in those days, dudes would kind of slip off and fuck with a hoe and, you know, tell her, like, hey, you know, you don't come around. You don't. It was a secret to mess with hoes unless they were in that environment to mess with a hoe like Studio 51 over in New York and some shit like that. They wasn't, you know, <laughs> they wasn't marrying these hoes and promoting them and putting them all out on blast on TV and taking them on vacation and putting them on a pedestal. Or they couldn't. Even if they wanted to, they couldn't. They didn't have the media. They didn't have the option to. But now they do, so the the landscape has changed. Uh, I remember I remember growing up being a hoe would get you ran out of the neighborhood. Being a hoe would get you ran out of the neighborhood. Being yeah. a hoe, you had to switch schools. Your family had to switch schools for you if you were a hoe, or if you did something that was perceived as hoe, which now is just the norm. Back in those days, right. early 2000s, 90s, if you were a girl and people found out you sucked your dude's dick, pause. That you gave head to your dude, and other women knew about it, and other dudes knew about it. Oh no, you were you were ran up out the school. <laughs> now they, I never seen nobody take it that far. They just they shamed them. But I never seen no. They didn't leave school or nothing like that. I never seen nobody take it that far. I just shamed them or made fun of them. That's why. Yeah. That's all I saw when I was growing up. But I, I don't know. I'm gonna say I don't know too many women. Personally, I know a lot of women across America. I don't know too many women that talk about Amber Rose. And Kim Kardashian. I'm not, now, I'm not. I'm not specifically talking about them. You, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not specifically sure. Yes, I'm talking about their following and them. I'm not specifically talking about them. Let's take them out the equation. But their talking points, their talking points, that dysfunctional talking points that they've been promoting, that they've been yeah. pushing. Because the slut walk ain't Amber Rose's slut walk. That just started yeah. in Europe, I believe. All right, yeah. their talking points, whether it be from an Amber Rose or some raggedy bitch from Basketball Wise or Loving Hip Hop or wherever they are uh, displaying hood rats on television at, the average woman has the same talking points as these dysfunctional women that are put up on a pedestal in society today. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Now, there's a lot of women out here that talk like that. I, I know some. I know a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But average? I don't know about that. What's the average woman talking about then? Because they can't be talking about marriage because 60% no. of uh, people are getting divorced in, in America. Not talking... And they're not even talking about getting marriage. And a lot of these women are having babies out of wetlock now. They're not talking about anything. They just work exactly. their job, go home, uh, go to the basketball game or football game, take a vacation every once in a while, go shopping. That's about it. Exactly. And our hoes ain't talking about shit today. 
I'm not talking about anything. That's really? what I'm saying. That's you, you're, you're proving my point. That's what I'm saying. These hoes ain't talking about shit today. So, yeah, but they don't. But that don't necessarily make them b- bad people. Just because they don't. I don't necessarily make them like the have the uh, I guess the mindset of of a lot of girls that's in so- on social media though. They just a lot of people just don't know. Uh, that's what I found. A lot of people just don't know. A lot of people are have bought into the you know what somebody told them. They don't do research. Um, they're confused, so they just go along and get along. It's no, you know I, it's not I, like I, 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 I'm not saying that they're a bad person. Like uh, you know I I, I don't I don't hold I don't hold hate. You know, just because a hoe is a hoe don't make her a bad person, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I think a, a selective hoe is a bad person. Now, that's what I think. I think selective hoes are bad people. What's that? What's that? What's a selective hoe? <laughs> that's like that's like you going up in a Walmart and they tell you, nah, you black, get up out of here. We don't, we don't serve blacks over here. We don't serve short guys over here. We don't serve tall guys over here. We don't serve guys that drive a Honda over here. We don't serve guys that live in this neighborhood over here. You know what I'm saying? These hoes, there's a lot of selective hoes. Like, a hoe is, a, you know, you're supposed to when you open up shop, that shit is supposed to open up shop for everybody. Not be like, <laughs> uh, you know, I'll accept money from you, but you over here? Nah. I, I, don't, I don't want you. Nah. Nah, nah. You, you a little bit you, you a little bit froggish looking. Nah. That's selective hoeing. I, I can't stand them hoes. <laughs> no, they call they call that renegade horn. <laughs> that's what they call that. <laughs> that's like like the that's horn on the weekends, basically. Or after work. <laughs> no, that ain't that ain't that ain't horn on the weekends because on the weekends when if you open from nine to five, you need to take everybody that comes along in single file order. <laughs> from nine to five you know don't i show up at your door bright and early in the morning you like uh nah you step out the line I, i'll take the guy behind you that's what i want all right damn what's wrong with me that's what i'm talking about selective hoeing I, I don't i don't like them type of hoes you're bad for society you're bad for the economy and uh shit i yeah I, I, <laughs> that's the majority that's the majority of hoes <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, that's the majority, you know. <laughs> even a well, shit, even a prostitute, uh, an escort, they don't take anybody. <laughs> well, that's what that's what I was referring to. I was that's that's yeah, what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, even they don't take everybody because you got some women that uh, they don't call themselves escorts or, or, or you know, but they, but every, but they. Demonstrate some type of hoish activities from time to time. So yeah. the lines you know. have been blurred. You know, I remember when calling a woman a hoe used to sting. You know, you call you, you hoe. Like, oh, don't! Yeah. I'm not a hoe. Don't you disrespect me like that? I ain't no hoe. I remember calling a woman a hoe meant something. You know, you can make a woman cry by calling her a hoe. Now. Oh man, they wear that like you know a badge of honor. Yes, I'm a hoe. I'm glad you yep. noticed. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm good. I don't know. You know. Yeah. Uh, but I think all right. The 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 cons to this really is the dysfunction that goes on in the West. It's it's gonna happen. In Asia as well, the, the worldwide, it, it's gonna be <clears throat> whatever they're going through out in West child support, alimony, uh, you know, kids out of wetlock. That shit is gonna happen out here eventually. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think they wanted to happen though, but it's it's gonna happen. You know. <laughs> What they gonna do? Yeah, I mean, it ain't but so much. Only thing you can control is is people's minds. 
you know that's the game that they play now but it ain't but so much and it's not so much you can do because everyone doesn't look at television everyone doesn't um you know some people don't pay attention the the um the marketing and promotion you know but but hey some people are gonna drink the kool-aid and some people won't you know yeah, they don't need a television they got a cell phone yeah even then even then some people you know they'll might check something out if it doesn't get their attention they'll move on to the next thing you know so it really depends on depends on the individual it's really called just sub, it's called just subconscious thinking that's yeah. when, that's the that's the messages that are being implemented without you even consciously thinking which sub your subconscious mind is working more than your conscious mind and people don't even know it i forgot the percentage but it was way more than the conscious mind so some people they'll look at something brush it off and don't even realize that it does have an effect on them yeah everything everything you look at everything you see everything you stare at it, it affects everybody it even affects me and i know what's going on it affects me it's every, everything everything matters if you stare it's kind of like when i when i if you be on instagram a lot and you if you scroll through and you look at the big booty women that's attractive if you keep looking at that shit you're gonna that's what you're gonna want that's the women are you gonna be attracted to if you keep looking at her every day in and out so yeah i mean now that's an old sales trick that, that i learned a long time ago if you stand whatever you stare at or if you or if you're trying to sell something or if you can stay in front of an audience long enough they're gonna buy your shit they're gonna buy into it that's the old sales trick you know it's not in... speaking of uh, big booty girls man some dude the other day on on live stream asked me uh he said uh uh he goes are there, are there big booty girls over there in asia that are real curvy i said man it's just i said, I said stay your ass in america man yeah. <laughs> i mean i wouldn't be going over there for that i mean I don't like that really that's uh, weird man you know i'm like stay your ass in america some of these guys are weird, man. You know. Yeah. All right, then. So, uh, any final words before we wrap this up? I right, just go um, check out my uh, website, ChooseYourRelationships.com. All the gear, books, uh, everything's there. T-shirts, etc. That's it. All right, man, this is Splash. I'm head of water on YouTube. Uh, website, Splash Wave FX. The letter F as in Fox. The, the letter X as in Xylophone. Splash Wave FX dot net. Check out the website. Everything is there. So uh, we over and we out. Peace. <laughs>